Hello YouTube, welcome to the garage. I'm in a uh, 2016 Ford Edge SEL. Um, this thing's got the 3.5 uh, Ford race motor in it. And the customer called to make an appointment, have me look at it. Uh, and he said that um, he thought it needed brakes, you know, front brakes, and also a uh, problem with the drive axle. He said it's making a grinding noise in the front. Well, so I'm out on a test drive and uh, I'm not exactly convinced this needs brakes and as far as it was making a weird noise and so I kind of wanted to bring you along so I just you know I said up you know just get you up to speed I'm out on the test drive you know the customer complaint was needing brakes and a grinding noise in the in the front is what uh, what it was described as um, this thing's got hundred and seven thousand eighteen miles on the clock okay like I said it's a 2000 what did I say 16 yeah Ford Edge SEL all right and then when I'm out uh, test driving it what I do whenever I want to uh, diagnose a like a drive axle problem is I try to get where I can get into a parking lot and really cramp the wheel like sharply one way and then also do it the other and I got I'm in a parking lot of a Dollar General. Um, I went for a little drive, you know, romping on the brakes, trying to see you know, what I what you know, I could find out in that. And the brakes really, I don't hear any grinding or anything like that. You know, maybe a little bit of pulsation, but it's not it would be typical warp rotor that I normally see. But um, I said when I got in this parking lot, it's it is making a weird noise. I hope it'll the camera will pick it up. Okay, I said I, I got some traffic here let me get them out of the way until they get out of the way I don't want to bonk into anybody here and of course I don't know what they're doing so they're just slowly creeping along I don't know okay all right so I got it cramped hard to the right and I don't know if you'll be hear this I don't know if the camera picked that up it's kind of a shutter and and that's coming from the back. It's a shutter. And it's a, that's to the, you know, let's see, uh, to the right, yeah, you know, right, left, yeah, okay. And now I'm gonna put it in reverse, cramp it the other way. You can hear it a little bit, but not bad. It's just, uh, I said, now it's doing it pretty bad. It sounds like that's coming from the back. Yeah, it's definitely a shutter in the in the back. I don't know if this thing is all-wheel drive or what. I haven't even you know, I haven't picked it up yet. I just uh, they dropped it off and I'm taking it for a drive. So it's got some sort of a funky shutter to it. Um, we have to find out if this is an all-wheel drive. Yeah, it's intermittent. It comes and goes, but yeah, I just heard it again. And there's like kind of a thunk in the back. I'm gonna go back to the shop, and I'm gonna romp on the brakes a few more times just to kind of get the feel of that. But uh. acceleration that I can just feel a little bit it's almost like when it shifts when the torque changes on it yeah I can you know this thing I don't know, it should you know for you know hundred thousand miles on it, it it feels a little rough whenever that um, I hear, hear that noise I can feel it in the steering wheel and actually in the seat like it's vibrating the whole car. This thing should be a lot smoother. Um, you know, this isn't a, ho a horrible road. It's not a great road either, but I can kind of feel it um, coming in and out. That shutter, the vibration, that doesn't smack exactly of a drive axle, but you know, I wouldn't think at 100,000 miles these would be bad. This car is uh, female driven, you know, not to make assumptions. I've you know, had some females blow my doors off before, so. 
Um, but I don't think this lady uh, drives her car hard. Um, so it would be kind of interesting to find out what this was. I said, I, you know, it, was, it, it, it didn't appear to be a straightforward axle, you know, worn out brakes kind of thing. You know, so that's why I kind of wanted to bring you along. Um, so we're, I got a car behind me so I can't romp on the brakes. Um, you know, I don't want to be that much of a jerk. But I said, you know, before I turned the camera on, I had done that, you know, speed up and then romp on the brakes. And I don't get the, the stereotypical uh, pulsation of the, the pedal, like if you have the, fr the front rotors are warped or anything like that. Uh, I didn't hear any, like, grinding, um, like as if it was in a metal metal on the, um, you know, between the, you know, like no pad material left kind of thing. Uh, so it, it's not just a, you know, I can feel a little bit of vibration when I um, push on the brake pedal, but nothing horrible. Um, it's not going to shake your fillings loose or, bleh, loose or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in the garage, get it up on the lift, and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, I got the edge up on the lift here, and this thing is all-wheel drive. Okay, and I just kind of gave it the hairy eyeball. The uh, axle boots there look good. They're not poor, so I can't wouldn't think of any reason why the joint would be bad. They go bad when um, they lose their grease. I'm just trying to get that in frame for you. This side. The boot's okay. That side, you know, of course we're in the back. And the boot is okay there. You know, yeah, uh, with a lot of miles, they'll, you know, can wear out. But usually, by then, the boot is tore. It's lost grease and that kind of stuff. So it's obviously got some sort of a, you know, a torque splitter here. Um... And that's what it felt like to me, like a, 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 a one of those, like on Subarus have those joints where they, they're kind of a, a slip joint in their, their all-wheel drive, um, you know, and the, and the drive shaft comes up to the transaxle up here. The, uh, can you see what I'm looking at here? The, that boot is fine. It's got a, you know, a split shaft here. That inner boot there is okay. The shaft goes into the transaxle. This side, the boot is okay. And the inside boot is okay as well. There. Uh, so the, you know, you can get bet that the uh, joint has uh, grease in it, lubrication, and the, you know, when I was lifting it up, I, I don't believe the brakes are wore out. They might be close, but there's, the rotors aren't scored. I didn't hear any grinding. So, you know, I am going to pull the wheels off and check for sure. But that's not the issue. That's not what's causing this this uh, shutter. And I, I can definitely feel it in the back. So, I'm going to have to look at service data and uh, find out, you know, theory and operation. How does this thing work? How does it, you know, shift torque? Um, you know, some differentials require a, you know, friction modifier. Uh, maybe this needs to be changed out, and you know, I don't know if the friction modifier loses its potency or something like that. So I'm going to get on all data and look it up, find out the theory and operation, and figure out how this thing works. And so maybe we can make a diagnosis, and I'll bring you back when I find something out. Okay, I've been doing some research on all data and looking through the symptoms here, the grinding, popping, or chattering noise from the rear axle when the vehicle is turning. That is what our symptoms we have. And um, it shows here, incorrect or contaminated lubricant. I checked it and it's full and it uh, appears to be clean. I don't believe that's the problem. And then the damaged or worn differential um, gears or pinion gears or the damaged uh, rear differential unit clutch. Uh, I, which is part of the active torque coupling clutch is what they call it. Uh, on Subaru they call it a viscous coupler. Same idea. Um, when we're looking underneath the car, uh, the 
unit in front of the differential is the actually active torch coupling clutch and I do believe that that's where the problem is but uh, doing some research and uh, also I have the luxury of having a very good friend who is an apex mechanic at a Ford dealership um, so I bounce ideas off of him and uh, you know I told him what I had going on and he says you know, this car has got 107,000 miles on it and he says a lot of times you know they've changed the uh, that whole differential and um, clutch assembly long before 107,000 miles. So he's actually surprised it lasted that long. So this uh, appears to be a common problem. And, uh, and like I said, it, you know, I do believe it's the actually active torch coupling clutch is the issue. But uh, what he told me is he said that, you know, do not just change that. Because the rest of it's got 107,000 miles on it, and he said it will go bad. He said, "Do yourself a favor, change the entire thing." You know, they never just change one or the other; they always change the whole, the whole shoot match. And he said, that, and that's not just because you know they're a dealer. He said, you know, seriously, to avoid any problems, don't ever just change either that coupling clutch or just the differential by itself. Always change it as a unit. So, and I believe him. Uh, so um, looked up the actual procedure of changing the axle assembly it is uh, pretty straightforward and the you know I would say the advanced DIYer could actually do this you know if you had uh, jack stands and and the tools and stuff to do it because it's really not that complicated you know this uh, 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 you know, unattach the drive shaft from the front of the the unit there. This is the actually um, the coupling, the clutch, the active torch coupling clutch. This is actually the unit. Um, you just disconnect the drive shaft. You know, unhook some wires, and then you, you remove this whole thing as an assembly. This is the you know the differential and the clutch assembly, and this is the carrier that's uh, part of the frame. Let it down. And you have to take, um, this is a better picture here, there will be drive axles here and here, the stub axle that goes in the differential, you have to take the drive axles out, you know, remove the wheels, take the drive axles out, and then let's say, take, just take the bolts out of this, you know, whole assembly here, it just tells you how to take it out, and then uh, just putting it back in. Uh, it's all aluminum, so I'm sure it's not really heavy, uh, and it's not all that big, but doing some reading here uh, the only thing that a, just your average DIYer would not be able to do I said you know as far as changing it you know and it, I'd say an advanced DIYer could do this job if you have the right tools okay but um, right here notice if replacing the axle assembly the 4x4 control module will need to be reconfigured with the new active torque yeah <laughs> rented lips active torque coupling barcode information uh, if the if the new barcode information does not match the existing 4x4 control module information driveline damage or drivability concerns can occur and my friend said that you will destroy the driveline if you try that you know driving it it's a you know just not just drivability concerns you will ruin it and therein lies the problem okay um, you know I have three different dongles by three different manufacturers that I've done reviews on and uh, you know since you have to uh, um, reconfigure it's not a reprogram of the whole module it's just putting in you know reconfiguring just putting in the uh, barcode information it's a uh, and it's it appears to be a, a pretty simple procedure I looked it up and there's just a a um, three number of uh, code on the uh, the clutch assembly that you have to enter into the four by four control module you, but uh, I tried it with all three of the dongles I have I've done reviews on them I've tried with all three of the dongles none of them would do it none of them have that capability okay so if you, if the DIYer was to do this job you would have to like put it on a rollback and take it to the dealership and have it programmed okay 
and you know that's doable but i just want you to know if you decide if you have this problem and if you want to do this on your vehicle uh you know go ahead and do it but do not drive it until in you know pay whatever the fee is usually it's not that bad take it you know make an appointment take it to the dealer have them program it then you can drive it home it's no big deal uh but you know you, know, you need a scan tool to do this reconfiguration okay and i have the x tool d9s pro it will do it and i have the think tool platinum s10 pro and it will do it also so i, I, I checked and either my x tool dongle the think tool dongle or the top down dongle none of them will do this the re, you can't reconfigure with it but um you know if you, a scan tool will if you you know have a scan tool you know someone has one or you're going to have taken it to the dealer okay well so the job is doable and i i called forward and the this whole differential assembly the, you know with the clutch and differential assembly with all this this whole thing here is about twenty five hundred dollars okay and then there's some extra bolts and stuff that you can't reuse but about twenty five hundred bucks for the the differential unit and then uh uh you know then you know labor putting it in if you if, but if you want to do it yourself uh it's about 2500 bucks for the part and uh but i can't stress enough that do not do this job without getting it reconfigured all right and i talked to the customer and they want it done uh, and so i'm uh, going to get some parts ordered up and uh then uh we'll uh i'll do a video of you know how to actually do this you know i'll walk you through it and uh then you know i have a scan tool i'll be able to reconfigure it and so that way it'll be drivable when i'm done so that'll be it for this part and uh if you could do me a favor you know like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video